ultimate dream was to move to a community, to join the family of Chabad Shluchim, the Rebbe soldiers, anywhere in the world. The question just where? First it was Berlin, then came Guatemala. Weston, Florida, and then the five towns. And by divine providence, this is where we started in September of 95. A wonderful family, George and Pamela Rohr, agreed to give us seed money to help start Chabad in the Five Towns. And for the first 18 months, we had a storefront which was literally home base. We had an apartment in Crown Heights where we slept at night. And every Shabbos for 18 months, we moved into some homes. We rotated between four families and we're truly grateful to those families. And every single day, we gave classes. I taught a read in Hebrew class. We, we gave Parsha classes, children's programs. We we started out with maybe the five or the ten, and we have thousands of kids who are bagel babies today. We came here in September, two and a half weeks before Rosh Hashanah, and we knew we wanted to have Rosh Hashanah services, but we had three families that we knew. So we created these very nice little cards that say you're cordially invited to attend services at Congregation Beis Menachem Chabad of the Five Towns. And I took my little baby, who was eight months old, Mendel, and a stroller walking on Central Avenue looking for people that I can hand out these cards to. I said, you know what? I'm going to walk into the store and see if I could buy something for my baby, or really not buy something, but maybe I'll find some customers for my shawl. And I found a little toy, and I go up to the cashier, and she says to me, uh, do you live here? And I say, we are just starting here. She said, really, starting what? And I said, we're starting a Chabad. Uh, she goes, what's Chabad? I said, well, we're an outreach center. We do programs um, and we have a synagogue. She goes, are you Orthodox? I said, well, we practice Orthodox, but we're very welcoming. Everybody's welcome to come. She looks at me and she goes, you're Eliyahu Anavi, you're Elijah the prophet. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so she says to me, my sister just gave birth to a baby boy. Her in-laws are very religious. They came from Israel for the Brit Mila and we're stuck. We don't know where to take them. Would you think you would have room for like 35 people for the high holidays? <laughs> we moved into a storefront at 540 Willow in September of 95. At the time, we were $50,000 in the red. It's time to buy a building. So you right away noticed the mindset of a shliach. I went over to another dear friend. Dr. Muller, thankfully a partner in our shlichus from the beginning, when it came to guaranteeing the mortgage for Chabad, they jumped into it and they said, we're going to do it. They said that the Rebbe was there for them and gave them Yiddish and Achas when he sent out a shliach to Suffolk County. Now it's payback time. There's another opportunity that we have right here, and that is the Ohel, the Rebbe's gravesite. During the times of the high holiday season, we've brought about 200 women from across Long Island. We call it Women Unite at the Ohel, Soul to Soul, and we ask the Rebbe to be our messenger to carry our tefillos to God, which is traditional at the gravesite of a tzaddik. We have seen tremendous things happen there, which cannot be described or expressed in words. And I highly urge and recommend all, no matter who, go there. You'll have an unbelievable, guaranteed experience. The question is how great it will be, it will definitely be great. You don't go anywhere without your film, sunrise to sundown. We had a wonderful man here who was one of our comments. His name was Yehoshua, of blessed memory. One day he calls me and says he has a friend of his whose father is really not doing well. And it seems that he doesn't have much more time in this world, and I go and see him. And I ran over there with Tefillin. I met this wonderful Jew who was never bar mitzvah. I put on Tefillin with him. It was literally his bar mitzvah. He was fully alert and conscious, but breathing with an oxygen tank. And I remember we said, Shema Yisrael. And then he broke down crying. And he said, I wish I got this when I was a child. And he was crying like a baby. I made him a little bar mitzvah, I brought along some catered food and danced around him, he couldn't dance. Sukkot came, I figured, let me and he said a bracha on the rule of an yasek. At the conclusion of Simchas Torah, I get a call that he passed away on Simchas Torah. I 
have certain merits. But you see, you know what? 25 years of work is worth for that neshama. To give him an opportunity literally 10 days before his passing to put on towels and film something he was robbed from. And he so wanted it. And sadly, he had a Jewish burial. Gratefully, but sadly, this was these are moments. Reaching out to people and putting on the film with the Jew is not a chabad thing. Giving a Jew an opportunity for mitzvah is our responsibility. Giving a person an opportunity to do a good deed, Jew or Gentile, that's who we are. You look back at 25 years. A few thousand children went through the preschool which was established by the Roar family. Amazing. Hundreds of kids went through Sunday school and many of whom ended up in full-time um, Jewish schools. Great, thank God. The C team has taken off thanks to Rabbi Meir and Hadassah, our partners in everything, especially with the youth programs, and has taken off above and beyond where hundreds of children from the local public schools today are affiliated with the Jewish life thanks to a C team. Amazing. This is not a job. This is a life's mission. A mission to connect to every single person on the level that they need connection. So we'll do the grand program. We'll get thousands, yes, maybe 5,000 people in the park for a lot of Omar. And that's beautiful because there's power and numbers. To have that Jewish pride, it's so important. It's also so important the hours spent learning one-on-one -on -one with somebody, being able to bring over a home-cooked meal, baking challah together with eight or 10 women in my in my kitchen, making the bracha and really davening, praying for each other's success. You know, those are equally, if not more important. The friendship circle led by Batsheva Bornstein thankfully has about 250 volunteers involved with about 180 families just this year. So thousands have been affected by it, but it's only beginning. More has to be done, and we feel that there's so much more that can be done. And that's the upward and onward. We recognize that 25 years was great, but it only laid a foundation to hopefully something that will be so much greater. We're blessed that we have good partners in everything. Rabbi Meir and Hadassah joined us 10 years into our ride, into our journey. So they're with us for the last 15 years, and they are a huge blessing and equal partners to us in everything that we do. We have incredible preschool directors. We see Adler and Suzanne Wallen. Thank you all so, so much for being our partners along with us on this journey of 25 years. Looking forward to the best which is yet to come. And thank you for those who are with us from the beginning, 25 years, and always there at our side. And for those who joined along the way, we are extremely grateful beyond words. Thank you. We don't consider you donors. We consider you partners. And thanks for your partnership. <laughs>